2020, I live like yesterday. The same spiraling hum ringing in my ears from the moment I awaken. It's inescapable, the light streaming through cracks in the window when mom forces them open. Sickening stench wafting from the kitchen trash can. Dirty laundry piling up in a corner of my closet. Dirty dishes, un <laughs> unwashed dishes still soiled with last night's dinner. Noon already, noon already, noon already. But every day will be the same. I saw you those times I blacked out only to be surrounded by white walls and picket fences. I can feel the clock ticking in the gut of the earth, but you leave me no choice but to ignore and live on, waiting to survive. 2020, you make me feel sane, or insane, I can't tell. You surround me with the people who see me for who I truly am, the ones who cradled me and breastfed me and taught me to act human, human, human. Family created me, but you, 2020, have shaped me into an isolated speck, the most fragile part of you. How I barely escaped the weight of a cough across six feet, a replacement for the daily illusion of 15 pounds strapped to my back, tripping on linoleum flooring. 2020, you seduce me with your words. Hands up, don't shoot. Yellow peril supports black power. White silence is violence. No justice, no peace. Just words. How they return home from school with nothing but scraped knees and bruised foreheads, denied of their books by teachers because they are illiterate, and the words are, and always will be, meaningless. A zip code. The five digits that determine the value of a life. Did you, 2020, intend for my life to be greater than hers? She whose vacant body was pushed to the floor because of her identity, zip code, female, immigrant, BIPOC, low income, uneducated. You ask questions and I'm searching for truth. Who is to blame? Corporations, politics, systemic oppression? Me? I am nothing more than collateral damage. 2020, my youth is poisoned. Our legacy is stained at the hands of sworn protectors of the law, and a virus takes the breath, 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 from thousands of helpless corpses piled along heaven's gate, while strangers march for nail salons on Capitol Hill, ignoring the masses of weeping widows and orphans bowed at their feet. You shock me with injustices poking at privileged lenses as I turn away from the news. Another death, another number, but the names play over and over in my head to the rhythm of your clock making a tempo in my chest. 2020, I fell asleep in your arms again, used your heartbeat to match my own, your comforting embrace like those of a child who long forgotten. But how many tick, tick, tick until the lullaby goes quiet? You refuse to answer, only hold my head against your shoulder and force me to wait another day. Thank you. So the poem I just read is entitled Catalyst, which coincidentally is also the theme of the event today. So when I was invited to speak, I naturally thought of this poem because of, one, the title, and two, the story that it tells about myself and my journey. And the story comes sandwiched between two pieces, a beginning and then a second beginning. So the beginning. When I was young, I really enjoyed writing as a way to escape the world. So when I started reading and writing poetry, you can imagine my delight that I'd found a way to translate all of these complex emotions I was feeling into a form of language that could capture the world as I saw it, using stanzas, metaphors, and other devices to capture the dualities of English and reality, both of which their rules I could break with my pen. However, being like the classic introverted writer child, these poems were just confined to 11 p.m. writing sessions. And this trend continued throughout middle school and high school up until 10th grade, when I applied to be the first Santa Clara County Youth Poet Laureate. And my first poetry sharing experience was actually as a finalist, reading my poem Catalyst to the judges and at the commencement ceremony. So to set the scene a bit, this was a couple months after 2020. I 
which, as you all know, was an explosion of chaos and political division and physical isolation for a lot of people in the United States. So Catalyst was my personal attempt to tackle all of this devastation and catastrophe like a way to cope. Um, and ironically, this poem would also become my catalyst into a world of political activism, empowerment, and poetry sharing. So circling back, what came after this experience was like a second beginning. But I do say second beginning with hesitancy because it was less of a rebirth, but rather a reimagining of myself as confidence and as having a story that not only could be told, but one that needed to be told. Um, after I shared this poem with everyone, I became part of a community that welcomed and celebrated my voice, encouraging me to share my poetry rather than simply write it. Um, although I did not become Youth Poet Laureate that year, um, it was such an amazing experience, and it actually put me on my own journey on self-discovery and personal growth. I joined the program's organizing team where I, for the first time, learned about poetry as a communal effort. I found purpose in my poetry, one that was greater than just myself, but for making change and for having a political voice in the broader community. But most importantly, I learned that poetry is not about being good or bad, but about the way it gives you, as the writer, a st confidence in your voice and others as the audience, a story to learn from, to relate to, or to be inspired by. When people talk about the issues that they care about, like they're often missing a why. Why should I care? For many people, it's hard to support these causes where you have no personal stake or personal understanding, but poetry can give you that why. Um, as a young girl, I know what it feels like to have our voices ignored or rejected, so I hope that when I use it to speak up, other people will not only believe me, but also understand the courage that it takes to do so. Similarly, I encourage you all to use your voices to tell your stories, your experiences, and talk about the injustices that you see in your community around you. Give a face to the movements that you advocate for. Cultivate empathy. As I embark on my year-long journey as the second Youth Poet Laureate of Santa Clara County, I've dedicated myself to making sure that other youth get the chance to experience their voice being heard and for being valued for their authentic selves, as I did. Um, so to kick off this vision, I'd like to encourage all of you guys in the audience today to try poetry sharing at least once in your life, whether you've never picked up a pen before or you're also a secretive writer by Moonlight like me. Um, over the past two years, my life has completely flipped upside down, all because of my catalyst, the poem that I dared to share in front of an audience over Zoom. So I hope that these past 10 minutes can also be your catalyst in to try something new and to put yourself out there and to be vulnerable. Um, although poetry may not be exactly where you end up, I've learned that it certainly has the power to be your new beginning, the open door to a realm of opportunity, but only if you're brave enough to try. Thank you.